Miracy. I'm Terry Dean, and you're listening to Making It. I run a business called My Marketing Coach, and I help entrepreneurs earn more, work less, and enjoy life. When I was young as a child, I didn't really have much of a plan going forward of what I wanted to do when I grew up. And the thing that I enjoyed doing the most really was playing a lot of strategy war games, basically going into a war game, having the strategy, coming up with a system and building something like that. But I never really translated that to where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. And even once I grew up and started going to college, I actually was a college dropout and kind of floundered around through a bunch of dead-end jobs before I came online. I sold satellite dishes door-to-door. This was up in Indiana, in an area around Hagerstown, Indiana, which had a lot of Amish. So I went door-to-door selling satellite dishes, and about half the houses I ran into were actually Amish, which if people don't know, the Amish don't use electricity, so they weren't buying satellite dishes. And as a door-to-door salesperson, I was horrible at it. I was not good at doing a close whatsoever in one-on-one sales. And so I really only lasted at that job a couple of weeks before they let me go. I signed people up for credit cards in front of Sears. I was one of those people out there saying, hey, you get this free bear or whatever else that I was giving away if you sign up for a credit card, a Sears credit card. I did that for quite a while. The one thing I was actually good at, even as an introvert, was I was really good at grabbing groups. And you got paid a commission there. And I got a pretty good commission working there because I would grab these large groups of people, especially like older teenagers or like people in their 20s who were there with their friends. And I would get one person there over here and then I would convince everybody else they should sign up also while they're waiting for them. So I basically did mass groups. Even as an introvert, that worked quite well. And it, it kind of helped just hey, let's be a kind of a little bit of a carnival barker. Let's get everybody in here. I get one person, and then I'm going to get everybody in the group. I went from one dead-end job to another, and the last job that I had was delivering pizzas for Little Caesars. When I was doing that, and I considered that just a miserable experience, I first started hearing about the internet. This is back in 1996. So there wasn't a lot going on, but I started doing some research and, you know, this is the early days of the internet and people were talking about some people who had started up small businesses online and they were doing things online. And again, as an introvert nature, I basically said, you know, this is something that I can do. I went out and bought my first PC, which was like a 75 megahertz at Best Buy. And I taught myself how to use that PC. And then I went online and I initially got my start by buying licenses, basically reprint rights to some, what you probably call self-help type videos. And I basically put up an ugly website and started selling those self-help videos online to get my start while still delivering pizzas. (laughs) One of the things that I was doing to generate traffic and visitors to my site was I was actually participating in CompuServe's forums. They had all these group discussions and I would go in and participate regularly in them, which is, that's funny. We're talking 1996. And you notice how everything kind of goes in circles because now we have social media today, which is a whole lot better. But I got started on the social media of that day, which was CompuServe's group forums. And my biggest breakthrough was when I realized that my income each month was directly proportional to the size of my email list. So the absolute best thing I could do was get people over to my website and get them on an email list, give them a lead magnet, something for free, get them on my list, and then email them regularly. I was only sending an email once a week back then. I was afraid you know, saying more than that might scare them off. But still, once a week emails back then, as the list grew, so did my income. So my breakthrough was like several months in, I would say it was about six months before I realized that my income was directly proportional to the size of my list. And then I really started focusing on my list. And that's my big breakthrough was that discovery. My list determined my income. My biggest lesson throughout is to learn how to say no to all the opportunities that are out there and all the things that you could be doing and limiting those activities. That's something I did very poorly beginning. It was, I said yes to almost everything in the beginning, which you kind of have to do in the very beginning. You're going to say yes to more, but that's one of the things you're going to want to learn to focus on as you go over time is, hey, narrow down. I did a lot of public speaking in person. I don't do it today because I don't want to. So I can limit that today, even though I did some of that in the beginning. So for somebody who's just starting out, you know, do what you need to get started. 
sometimes, as I said, you're not going to know exactly who you like serving the best. So you start a little bit broad. But one of your things as you begin to scale the business is almost kind of the exact opposite of what you would think. You would think, hey, I want to scale my business by going broader. Now you're actually going to scale your business better, more successfully, and enjoy it more if you start scaling your business by limiting it down and focusing better on a specific audience and learning what opportunities and activities to get rid of over time. You can build the business of your dreams, stay focused, stay purposeful, keep moving forward in it, be willing to try a lot of things. I had to step out of my comfort zone quite a bit when growing the businesses. Again, even learning to write emails was difficult because I'm very much a just the facts type of person. If you wanna write good emails, you have to learn how to include stories as well. So I had to learn to do storytelling in the emails. I had to learn how to make those connections, that personality into my emails as well. And so I would give those lessons is face those challenges, grow as you need to, to expand your message. And then as you're growing your business, start looking for the opportunities of what can I systematize? Okay, what systems can I put in place? Even when it's just you working in the business, what systems can I put in place to do things quicker? And then how can I start outsourcing or start building a team so that I can scale my business? And as you start scaling, again, start narrowing down I'm going to narrow down the audience that I most want to serve. I'm going to narrow down the activities that I most want to focus on. And that focus is what's going to create my success, especially as the business grows. Making it is the point that you are able to earn a good enough income to take care of yourself, take care of your family, while at the same time having freedom to choose what you do. And today, I would be a little bit more strict about what I was back then. I mean, back then, it was just... I have enough money, I don't have to go to a crappy job anymore. That was making it back then. Today, I would add to it that you want to have the freedom to do the things that you enjoy doing. At least most of your time is spent on things that you enjoy doing. There's always going to be some activities you don't necessarily enjoy, but the most majority of your time spent on the things that you love doing. You have the freedom to work with the people that you like helping, and you see yourself making a difference in the lives of others while earning a good income. I'm Terry Dean, and you've been listening to Making It. You can find me at mymarketingcoach.com. You can also grab a free Golden Glove cheat sheet to show you my five persuasion tips to help you convert more of your visitors into leads and sales at mymarketingcoach.com slash golden dash glove. Making It is part of the Mirror CFM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Course Lab and Just Between Coaches. This episode of Making It was produced by Danny Bermant and Jeff Govertson. Cynthia Lamb is a supervising producer. Danny Innie is our executive producer. Post-production by Post Office Sound. So you catch the great episodes that are coming up on Making It, go ahead and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It's the best way to help us get these ideas to more people. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.